Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Bipolar Awakenings podcast with me, Sean Blackwell. As many of you know, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview Phil Borges, the director of the film Crazy Wise. And a few days after our interview, he told me that he'd been in touch with Adam Gentry, who was featured in the film. And Phil wanted to know if I'd be interested in interviewing Adam. And obviously I was. So with Phil as our liaison, here we are today. Okay, so Adam, Hmm. thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be cool Uh, because, you know, a lot of people who are going to watch this interview have seen you in the movie, so they might be curious about you and your life and, and, uh, you know, the whole bit. Why did you even decide to participate in such a thing? You know, um, it's a pretty personal, you know, revelation, that documentary. But so I I might want to start with, you know, how did you meet Phil and how did he rope you into doing this movie? (laughs) So... Um, I met Phil through someone that was working at a coffee shop, uh, Soul Food Books. I was going there a lot. And um, Phil had a a friend working there or something along those lines, a connection to someone who worked at Soul Food. And he was um, looking for people to participate in a meditation film. It was a meditation film in the beginning. Yeah, it started out as just a... Um, interviewing people that have uh, tried meditating or found meditating to be beneficial and just doing like, I, I think a series of interviews with different meditators. And okay, so um, regardless of whether they had a disorder or not. Right. Yeah. It wasn't um, related to that at that point. And okay. so um, the person at soul food knew that I was um, doing those Vipassana retreats at the time. And so they were like, Hey, this guy is making a film about meditation. Would you be down to do an interview with him? And I said, yeah. And I thought it was like a, I imagine like a college student or some, you know, someone working on this film and then like show up to Phil's house. And it's like a whole thing, dude, like nice camera. You know, I was like, Oh my God, what, what is this? (laughs) I've been in Phil's house. It's pretty impressive. It's amazing, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so I did an interview. The first interview that we did once we got done with the interview. Um, and in that interview, I did talk about how the reason I sought out the meditation center was due to having a bipolar experience when I was a little younger and being uh on you know i i went into that whole thing in that interview and that kind of hit phil um where he was like wow i've I've actually um made a lot of or done a lot of interviews and interviewed a lot of people all over the world and that continues to come up of somebody having a psychotic break and then trying to find an alt well in the cultures he interviewed, it was a whole different thing, but he saw the parallel, I guess, in what, what I was talking about or being like, okay, this is kind of seems like a similar situation. And so, uh, so he, he kind of had a focus on this idea of like just mental, so-called mental disorders and spirituality, even before he got to doing crazy wise. Right. Know. Yeah. I guess he, he did, um, I I feel like he he was actually at some point working on a film trying to capture that or showing different, um, I guess, like shamanic tribes or people that follow shamanism and the different different healers and things all over the world. I think he was documenting and filming that and like making some type of documentary about it. And then he decided to stop and just kind of, it was about, I think it was like 10 years before the Crazy Wise film occurred, but it so it was already something on his mind. And then that interview and the similarities just kind of, I guess, reminded him of it. And then he wanted to um, try and tie the two together, I guess. Yeah. And so what, you know, maybe if you take a step back, what drew you to Vipassana? Um. So I had a a good friend of mine tell me about it and he was just explaining 
his experience with it and what he gained from it. And I was um, just in a real miserable place. I was taking a ton of different medications at the time and just feeling awful and really wanted to find a better way, something that would hopefully work out for me. You know, I was down to try like anything really. And that it sounded like extreme and like really weird to me at the time, but also, you know, I was already just kind of like in an extreme weird place in my head anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but yeah, they... it was from a friend. All right. And I've done the Vipassana meditation too, the, mm -hmm. the 10 day retreat. And they usually screen people out if they've had some sort of mental stress or disorder of some kind. Right. Um, did you just lie on the form or did they have, did, they didn't have that where you were? No, I actually, I had to, um, I told them the truth and then I had to go through this like extra process where they, um, they required a letter from my psychiatrist and I, they may have even had a phone call with him as well. I'm not sure, but they did do okay. a, a check with my psychiatrist and to like, mm. be like, how is he doing type type stuff? Do you feel like he would be able to handle something like this? And so they, they do an extra check and then they put you on a little red flag list. Like if that guy starts acting weird, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to go. <laughs> He's got to go. You got to go. <laughs> Sorry, man. You're crazy. It's <laughs> Sorry, dude. It's, it's not yeah. Buddha. <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm like, what? No. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. go ahead. <laughs> um, but you had, what kind of experience did you have your first time around? Because just for people who don't know, it's 10 straight days, 10 hours of meditation a day, very limited vegetarian diet, and they are strict, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I wanted how, to leave. How did it go for you? It was really tough, man. It was super tough at first. Like I wanted to leave. I think on day three, I was already just like, mm. this is, I couldn't get into the first meditation into Anapana, the, the first meditation they teach you. And do you okay. recall that Which, in the, how does maybe that it was go? different. It's just observation of the is breath. That just and then going back to the breath. Okay. Really just, just yeah. training the mind to stay. And, uh, mm -hmm. or yeah, they had a, the breath the going in, in and out through the nose, right? The breath going right. in and out through the nose. Right, so you're right. Just, you're just focused on what they call the nose box, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I, but my first three days, I didn't have a single second of uh, staying with my breath my mind was just going mm. everywhere and I was just sitting there for 10 hours, losing my mind, <laughs> just being like, what am I doing here? I, and I can't do it. Apparently I can't do this damn thing, you know? And then wow. it finally started clicking or I had an experience with it on day four. And then I just stuck with it, but I did have a really hard time at first, even just uh, getting into the beginner or the first meditation they, they teach you. Mm -hmm. So I felt like scared and frustrated and like, I'm, I'm out, dude, like <laughs> right away. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened on day four that shifted things? Um, I, it was such a bizarre, I never experienced that, but I went into just the, the stillness of mind and was observing my breath and I, I wasn't having thoughts. I was just in that, that quiet state of observation and then my, I'm not sure how long I was in there for, but it felt amazing. Or when I, when my mind started going again, then shortly after I was like, wow, I just had like a real moment of just quiet and just observing something. It was really, it was neat. Mm -hmm. and, and that's I just, pretty much on that retreat. That's, it's the What's his name? Guenka? Yeah. And his videos and that. S.A. Guenka, something like that. I think yeah, S.N. Guenka. Yeah. S.N. Guenka. Yep. And they say, they say, look, you're going to meditate for about three days and your mind is going to slowly slow down. And on the fourth day, they say you're going to have a no mind state. They yeah, really they say. say that. Huh. Yeah, I wasn't even like paying attention. 
<laughs> you, were you weren't watching the videos? I guess not. Or I, I probably. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. man. Yeah, no. And I was really weirded out by that experience too. Just the whole thing I thought was really weird at first. The watching the discourse at night on the TV and the the oh, dudes okay. in the weird clothes, just no one talking. The whole thing. I was like, this is a death cult, dude. <laughs> I'm getting and I don't know like, I don't know if you noticed but in those videos and, and in the tapes because they play tapes from Gwenk in the morning right and right. you hear from this guy Gwenk every now and then but he's he's telling you you know things like you know focus on your breathing inhale exhale and then you'll hear this there's this coughing on the recordings. All the recordings have this coughing. Right. And, and then you see the video and it's his wife sitting next to him. And she's just Who's hacking not saying away anything. all his yeah. recordings. No, know. she's not saying anything. She's just there hacking away, ruining all his recordings. It's priceless. It's, it's That's really so funny. funny, dude. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you got into it. You saw the benefit. You didn't have any like really difficult experience after that. You settled in and, and it was beneficial. Did it, was it just like a happy ending for the rest of the retreat? No, I mean, I was, yeah, once I started getting into the meditation and then um, it does, it starts bringing things up. I'm sure you experienced it. Like you get into a, mm -hmm. way more into your emotions and past experiences and man, no, I got really, really emotional. I was going from like depressed and crying to laughing to angry wanting to scream you know just the whole thing like i felt really really crazy for like i don't the majority of the time i was there it wasn't until um i think it was the seventh day that i had i think it may have been a kundalini experience but it was uh, mm -hmm. it was hard for me to discern if it was a kundalini experience or if it was the bunga experience that they speak about do you recall I don't that? Know what bunga is no. bunga, dude. <laughs> bunga. It's bunga. It's the uh, what happens there. I guess you know it. It did it. What I experienced fit their description, but I felt like a, um, like a lack of my body. I became more of the aware of just the energy body or just the energy within me, mm -hmm. and then there was just mm -hmm. kind of this blending where I felt like I. I kind of moved into all the space around me where I, I really did just sort of turn into energy for a minute and lose the body and feel this really pleasant electricity, which is really similar to the Kundalini. But so I'm not sure yeah. what really happened, but it was, yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> okay. It, and it then after like that one type of Kundalini experience you had. Okay. Yeah. Bunga. That's what I think maybe uh, what Vipassana might be teaching. Or maybe Bunga is uh, in relation to the Kundalini. I'm not sure. Okay. But the uh, the experience was just like a really uh, pleasant one. And then after that in meditation, I experienced a lot of um, letting go of I guess just a lot of pain that I was holding and like painful perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of self-hatred that definitely came up my first or during that experience, just how much I, I was holding hatred towards me came up and I felt like a, like a forgiving of myself for that and realizing that hate was, you know, stupid. It was a, a pretty deep perspective change that I, I almost felt like physically lighter after that happened wow yeah so it was it was really yeah. good for me man um but and with everything that you went through you, you which sounds extraordinarily intense you never went into mania you never had like a bipolar or relapse in this retreat um, at least in this first one no, I mean, it really did feel like, I mean, there was days where I was definitely manic. I mean, I was sitting there oh, yeah. talking to myself in like a different accent, doing anything I could to like, 
you know, keep myself, the silence was maddening. That was really tough for like the first half of it, but I was totally going, I felt like in and out of mania, having all sorts of crazy thoughts about how the universe works and all sorts of stuff in a very like, uh, high space and then a very, very low, you know, but definitely doing the bipolar cruise, but I was just silent. Okay. So no one could probably tell. <laughs> yeah. It's you know. pretty hard to be quiet and manic at the same time, you know, right. I was silence. probably teetering. If I was fully manic, I don't think I would have stayed quiet. You know, I was probably in like a hypo uh -huh. hypomania, you know, yeah. but you were still, even though you were kind of teetering, you were working through some deep processes that you found yeah. very important, very healing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and I had a similar experience, you know, when I did the Vipassana retreat on the fourth day, I went into a full Kundalini process Far um, out. and I was, I was worried that it might go off and I'd get delusional. And mm. so I, I just refused to meditate when I wasn't comfortable and they got pissed off at me for that. Cause I was just laying in bed every morning and they're knocking on the door. Why aren't you meditating? And I'm like, I'm, I'm afraid of psychosis. I don't you know, want to. And it's Portuguese. Like my Portuguese wasn't very good. It's still not. Oh, you were in Brazil. Was really bad. I was in Brazil and, right. and I'd say, you know, psychosis, I'm afraid of psychosis. And they would just go away and come back and say, you can leave if you want. I'm like, I can't leave. You know, I can't, like I couldn't get on a bus in the state I was in, you know? Dang, yeah. So I just kept rolling with it. It's really interesting that that you went that way, that they accepted you, that you could process a lot, you know, and and then that Phil got interested in you, not through your so you know your disorder, but through your meditating. Yeah, that is pretty ironic, man. Or I haven't really thought about that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, here's a meditator who happens to be bipolar, and then Phil was like, oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. And so then why did you agree to be in this movie? Dude. So. <laughs> Dude. Dude. So. <laughs> so when I, I did the initial interview, I signed a model release form or some type of like where I, I give permission for you to use any footage of me, you know, to. Sure. For whatever your whatever this film is. And uh -huh. so, and then, um, after that interview, then it was like a few, I'm not sure, maybe like a week or so later, Phil contacted me and then was, um, proposing to make the, make a documentary focused on just kind of following me around and my experience with meditation. And it was bizarre. Like right after our first interview, I started having uh, I started getting scared again and experiencing things in my mind that I wasn't understanding. Like I definitely had another uh, scary experience going on, like shortly after talking with him, which was, you know, but so that is what he, when he decided, he's like, oh, this is, I would like to follow you, you know, and just ex see what happens. And um, he even gave me the, opportunity like the say of the film as much to be like you can be the co-director of it and you can have final say of of whatever happens i'm not trying to tell a story we're just gonna we're just gonna follow you around and just see and at first i was like cool you know and even weirder dude when i when i went to phil they i think they did another interview with me it's so hard for me to recall exactly, but maybe it was so our first interview, then second interview, when I went to Phil's house, I was telling them like, Hey, I'm, I'm actually kind of freaking out again about mm -hmm. like reality and everything, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, one of the people there recommended that I watch your YouTube channel. You're kidding. <laughs> no. Even I'm before not. the movie started, it was like, yeah. oh, check out Sean Blackwell. Check out Sean Blackwell, oh my God, dude. That is so wild. Isn't that funny, dude? Wow. And I did. And like, man, and that was super. I, I wish I could. My memory is like, as I, I don't know, whatever state my mind went into, my memory isn't so great. 
I don't, I couldn't tell you what videos of yours I watched, but I do remember just being like, this guy's awesome. And that mentality <laughs> is helpful. You know, like, it's, 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 yeah. you know, people, I, I can, I can get frustrated with the work, you know, cause obviously it hasn't taken over mainstream psychiatry in any way, but people tell me things. I was talking to Josh Roberts, this peer advocate on my last interview and he was like, you inspired me to do this. You know, like he said, your work has ripples that you're not aware of. And this For is a real. ripple. The fact that you were looking at my videos even before Crazy Wise, and that might have had something to do with you participating in the movie. For real. Uh, that That's a ripple. Wow. Thank dude, you. a weird one. Yeah. No, that's, what, thank you. I don't know, dude. It's a weird though. <laughs> It's it's really weird. Yeah, and I right. knew nothing about it, you know. And when I reached out to Phil, he never mentioned anything. He only said, like, he, he knew my work. He knew my work. Because I saw him in a TED Talks. And he's Phil's got a TED Talk on psychosis and spirituality that's done, like, 6 million views. You know? Right, right, and right. When I saw that, I reached out to him, and we started talking. But he never he, – he told me he knew my work, but he never gave me this backstory, so – yeah, yeah I, I, I think it may have been um, Deborah. I think Deborah is the one that recommended your YouTube channel right mm -hmm. after we did this, uh, or me being like, I'm freaking out, guys. But yeah, and they, they were all. <laughs> 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 yeah, and so, okay, so you see this different perspective brought to you by yours truly. Right. And that shifts your perspective on whether you want to do the movie or not? No, I mean, that it was just really cool to. That was really cool, but I still, um, so I mean, I was, I'm, I'm sure that had some, I mean, just, well, no, because I agreed to it before I saw your YouTube channel or right. I agreed to it when I was at, at his house that second time and being like, okay. And then I went and checked out your YouTube channel, Okay, but, um, Honestly, even just the way I think a lot of it, just how they were, they weren't approaching me like, um, the, just the way they were kind of holding me, it was like, oh, this is interesting. And this might be really good for you. Like, we think you're okay. Type, type approach to me, right. you know, instead of like, oh, we want to watch this crazy person do crazy shit. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> So that, that definitely made me like open to it. And then, um, yeah, but it didn't last long, man. I totally tried to quit. <laughs> I totally like, yeah, I couldn't there handle was a it part... at all, man. I could not handle it. <laughs> no, you couldn't handle it. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like yeah. for you? What was it like for you when you felt like I can't handle this? Um, it was just. Well, it was kind of funny because I was like, all right, man, like I'm, I, I've got to just quit dude. And like, and I felt bad, you know, but mm -hmm. it was just like, man, I, it's just too much for me. This is just too weird. It was just such a trip to me, man, all of it. And having people, um, it was when people started responding on the blog or they were like releasing things where it kind of became like, uh, I was getting like live feedback and people like contacting me and like oh, wow. all sorts of stuff while I was like really tripping and was like, this is too weird, man. This is just too much. And, um, and so I, so yeah, and I like freaked out on Phil. I don't even remember what I said, man, but we were like behind soul food and I was like all upset. And, uh, then Phil was like, well, no man, like you can, you can quit but we are going to make this film and like, you're probably going to be in it, you know, like, <laughs> oh, really? and that, yeah, pretty much like, cause at that point there was, I think we'd been filming for, I don't know, quite a while, maybe like six months or something. But in like the mm -hmm. film itself, like started expanding, like immediately they were doing, they found a, you know, doing interviews with doctors and all these different things, like sort of seeing the direction of the film more, I think. And then, uh, Kevin came in as a co-director cause I totally couldn't be a co-director, <laughs> okay. you know? 
and um but yeah then it was kind of like uh then I was just sort of like half in and that felt really weird to me of being like damn dude like and I still didn't know what the film was gonna be at that point or anything like that but just being like I'm just gonna be in this film I don't really know what the end of this film is gonna be or what you know how I'm gonna end up being in this film and that kind of made me want to just write it out till the end to at least participate in it and not just I don't know I was I was afraid of what the film was at times like I was so paranoid or just like what I don't know man but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah the um realizing like I was already gonna be in it and then it was like well I need to just do it dude or just keep doing what was going on mm -hmm. and it really was like a it was just bizarre therapy it was overwhelming for me and weird as hell but it was also so cool to like sit there with phil or kevin while i was in those weird spaces and having them like just talk to me in that light just asking me questions and just talking to me like i was okay in a sense or maybe not okay mm -hmm. but um not just some crazy dude so it right. you know and there was a lot of therapy that... with it it was yeah weird. you felt it very therapeutic huh yeah yeah it was super just crazy therapy man mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but did i totally tried like to phil... quit <laughs> did, did you feel like yeah. phil was really listening yeah yeah it was i think uh i mean just the connection with phil man like just the way he was viewing my experience and just viewing me as a person made me like want to uh keep going forward and like because i would lose that in myself all the time or just being like man i'm just crazy i don't know what the hell this is dude you know and phil would kind of like bring me back to like hey man you're like learning something like or this is like okay this is something your mind needs to do kind of thing like mm -hmm. so like a grounder you know mm -hmm. and yeah. you know there's scenes there's scenes in the movie like you know you're you were at one point you were living in your car right right i mean that was happening and then you'd see like phil who's supposed to be directing the movie i suppose and he's in the car with you and you guys are having this conversation <laughs> and it's like right. this is as raw as it gets you know yeah man yeah, yeah sitting there, like so many it was so weird or just sitting in those parking lots you know and just be like oh and here's phil or here's kevin we're just hanging out <laughs> talking about life dude and just like <laughs> Whatever. It was yeah. bizarre man yeah. and did you see the film i or did like johnny depp <laughs> no i you did dude it. it was yeah. so weird i actually um, they asked me to go to a premiere and I went and it was like the weirdest. It was so weird, dude, sitting in a movie theater and watching that film and just being like, what, what have I done, dude? <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, just so, you know, it's not like, it's very embarrassing and weird, dude. <laughs> you feel, you it's, feel embarrassed a little bit watching it? Oh Yeah. And I mean, all sorts of things. It is very weird to, to just watch something like that, man. And like mm -hmm. seeing my parents in the film, just everything. It was, it was bizarre. And just looking at weird little snippets of my life and just being like, oh, I remember that. That, that was crazy. <laughs> like, it was just weird, man. Do you have moments from the film, like where you're filmed in a non-ordinary non state, like you're in a manic state and then you're you're in the theater watching you in mania and what's that like dang it's very weird i don't know it just feels like oh shit man like you were freaking out dude <laughs> just dang it man <laughs> dang it <laughs> ah. but at the same time you know when phil but said that's to a, me you know the you... point of it i guess sorry sorry to interrupt, yeah. But yeah it's like well <laughs> I guess I did my job. I was the crazy guy in the film, so. <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
Well, I was going to say, you know, I, I wasn't sure if you were going to agree to an interview. I knew Phil, Phil really set this up. He said, hey, I was talking to Adam. Would you be interested in interviewing him? And, and you, you agreed. There yeah. must be part of you that must be proud of, of the finished product. I mean, why, why would you agree to do this interview if the whole thing was embarrassing? Um, you know, I, I feel like a part of, of the, the experience what, that was weird for me was sharing just kind of like quick little snippets of my life and having it kind of fit a, a storyline. So it kind of creates this like, oh, I totally know this guy in his entire life and his whole experience. And it comes across like that. It and does. it sort of does. And you, and it, uh -huh. that part, I don't, yeah, I don't like that part where I'm like, oh shit. Now yeah. I feel like I have to like talk more or like be, or I like shared myself in a super weird way, <laughs> you know? Okay. And now I feel like weird gaps and like, or I don't know. I don't really know how to, how to sum it up. Yeah. But, no, but I know what you mean because in a sense, because writing like, writing my first book, but now I'm into my second book and you're kind of weaving a narrative out of a wide range of experiences that maybe you're just stitching things together that really don't need to be stitched together. But if you're going to tell a story, there has to be some sort you of a linear to. connection. It can't just be right. these random things. And, and we tell right. each other stories about our lives all the time, but those stories erase out a lot of, you know, contradictory things and, you know, parts of us that maybe don't fit the the main narrative because it just, it could be just too confusing, you know? Right, right. Uh-huh. Well, what part of the movie did you like? Is there a part you liked? Man, I really do like the film a lot. It's just bizarre yeah. that I'm in it, but I think the <laughs> film is great. Like, I really do. And I am proud to be a part of it. Like definitely. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, good. I think the message that Phil and Kevin and everybody, um, and you know, maybe it's not even one message, but just the questions that are raised and the perspective that's shared in it, I think is really great. And so, to um, yeah, to promote it, to and I am, I am proud to be a part of it. It's just weird. You know, but I really do agree with the film. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. bizarre, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, know, I know what you mean. And, and actually, when I, when I wrote the first book, I put, I put a lot of stuff in my first book that was kind of embarrassing that really my mm. family didn't want me talking about, or that they didn't like my perspective. But I was like, look, people need to know that this is the kind of shit that goes on. And right on, I man. have to expose myself in this way. You know, or else it won't come across as real, you know? Right on. Yeah. Man, I want to read. I haven't read your book. I need to read your book, dude. It's a free PDF. Cool. You can get it on my cool, website. Cool, dude. <laughs> it is cool, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, just the sharing the weird, like, I don't know. It is, it is healthy, I think, for people to just be open and honest and vulnerable about whatever weird things they're experiencing or painful things or whatever it might be. The well, and, and, you know, I used to work in advertising, right? So my whole job was about fake, right? So crazy. I dude. have a, like, I have a burning desire to just, just be as authentic and as revealing as I possibly can. And, and largely out. out of that background, it's like, I don't want to be this ad person. I want to be the opposite, you know? Right on. Yeah, yeah. That's a well, trip. That's, great. that's a total trip. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, I've been revealing, maybe this is the one thing that really links us, is is that you've been very revealing in the movie. Um, you know, I've been revealing in my book. In a sense, we're, we're sort of open books, although it doesn't tell the whole story, right? It doesn't tell right. everything about where we've been and, and our life experiences. Um, but what's going on, or... Like we were talking and you're living in the middle of nowhere near Canada. Yep. You're up in the, Phil said near the Okanagan Valley, which is in Canada. Um, I think it's in both. Yeah, I think it too? crosses over 
or there's one in Canada and one okay. here as well. Uh, so what made you decide to to sort of leave society as much as possible? Um, I was having a, a really difficult time integrating back from being homeless. Like mm -hmm. I, I didn't, um, it is very, it is a whole thing, man, to go from homeless for a long time to trying to be back in a home to be domesticated and to be in a normal, normal life again was like really, really weird. And then, um, my father passed away of a heart attack at this just, it was super shitty, man. But, um, when he passed away, he actually left me some money and that was I'm sorry to hear about your father's passing, by the way. Hey, thanks, dude. Rest in peace, Roberto, dude. There's a cool drawing of him right behind me. It's oh, that's sweet. your dad there. Oh, you can see it. It's just not okay. in the uh, what I can see. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry, but um, from my uh, feet, we'll see it later. But um, he looks a little bit like a Clint Eastwood character or something. Yeah, my uncle drew him as uh, Doc Holliday. That's oh, pretty okay. awesome. Doc Holliday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so he left you some money and, and you were able to get this, this place, tiny yeah. house thing together. Yeah. Yeah. And actually I, um, I lived, I moved into an apartment, um, probably about, I don't, I don't know, like three months or so. It took me a while to find an apartment, but, um, got into an apartment and tried to do that for a year. And it was really, I was having a super hard time just with, uh, just PTSD, like really bad and hearing just any, any type of little sound. I wasn't sleeping at all. If I hear like a car door or just so much stuff that happens when you're homeless, like you're, I don't know. My sleep was like very, very shallow. And so I, um, okay. I wasn't, uh, I was just having a very hard time trying to, uh, be there and find stability and like get good sleep. And, uh, just a lot of little urban noises that were kind of setting yeah, you off. Yeah. Just the yeah. stimulation, man. And just having a hard time. I mean, just in so many things, dude, like just going to the grocery store, being in groups of people. I was just messed up about like pretty much everything. Like, just having a really hard time. And, uh, yeah. And we, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but you, 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 it came up in the crazy wise film about what started the PTSD for you. Right. Um, meaning the, like the childhood stuff or the Maui the or what occurred during Maui. Well, yeah, we were talking about the Maui thing. Could right. You just elaborate on that just a little bit for people who haven't seen the movie. Oh, okay. A word of caution. Adam is about to share a personal story of being brutally beaten. It may be triggering for people who are sensitive to graphic descriptions of violence. The story ends at about the 47 minute mark. If you want to rejoin us there. I was living, I was given a, a free plane ticket to Maui. It was while I was homeless and needing a place to be. And that seemed like a great, a really great option. There are uh, mm -hmm. homeless shelters all over the mainland that actually give homeless people one-way tickets to Maui. And I'm just, kidding. no kidding, I met people from all over the country. How did you get here? Free plane ticket from a church, dude. How'd you get here? Free plane ticket from a church, dude. Homeless people everywhere, dude. Like as bad as like any oh. downtown city, but it's Maui. And there's one homeless shelter that houses 28 people, or I think actually 20, but no kidding how common that is that, yeah, here you go. Here's a free plane ticket, you know, like get out of here, dude. And then mm. you just have a bunch of homeless people stuck on an Island <laughs> and the wow. locals and so are the super locals pissed, are... super oh, pissed, okay. right? Like, dude. And I definitely got lumped in with that. Like you guys are like a damn virus, man. Like, you know, there's some that are really mad about it, dude. And I, I do understand. 
<laughs> I don't think they should be murdering people about it, but like, dude, mm -hmm. a lot of people get killed every year in Hawaii for that exact same reason. It's and not you, reported did you have on your, your jaw broken or something happened with your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> They're still all gone, you dude. Teeth. You got a tooth yeah. knocked out there, huh? Man, it was a, uh, it was such a, uh, just a trip, dude. I mean, horrifying and horrible. There's this party that goes on every Sunday in Kihei. It's on this place called Little Beach. And they have like, there's a big drum circle. Everyone's running around naked. And it's, it's just this awesome beach party. And it goes on every Sunday. And it's obviously a known thing for like hippies and, and travelers and whoever to go to that. We were all sitting there. It was Cinco de Mayo. And I was sitting there playing guitar with my little group of friends over here. And they were like across the trail. And they just, they were like, hey, man, like, bring your guitar. Come, come play us a song, dude. Like, seeming all cool. And, but it was all a setup to just get me, get someone away from the group and then just beat them to death. And they, uh, the moment it started, it was, man, it was crazy. So I'm, I'm sitting there playing guitar and one of my friends, he, he was, uh, he was living on a sailboat at the time and he just broke his back. Like his sailboat, I think like the sail hit him and he broke his back and he was on crutches. And he was the first person from the group I was with to be like, oh, Adam's hanging out over there. That looks like fun. You know, like they're all laughing. It was bizarre how friendly they were to me. How like, I mean, we hung out for a minute laughing, talking, jamming. Buddy comes up on the crutches and right when, uh, so I, I just played the song and passed the guitar to the guy on my right. He wanted to play a song, but that was his way to be like, I'm going to smash your head in with this thing, dude. Like, <laughs> but so he, so I give him my guitar and, uh, Randy comes up on the crutches and right when he gets close and he's like, Hey, like, cool. The guy playing the guitar stops and just knocks Randy out. The guy on the crutches with the broken back. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, I just like froze and was like, what? Like, did these guys have a problem with each other? Like, I was totally dumbfounded. And I didn't realize that they had all just surrounded me while I was sitting there playing music for them. And I was just connecting with the guy on my right who then wanted my guitar. And then he did smash that on my face. He hits Randy. I freeze. And I'm just like, what just happened, man? Like, and I, I look to my left and then the, the dude that was holding the guitar just like sucker punches me in the ear. <laughs> and then they all just start rat packing me, just beating me down. And I like jump forward and rolled and I just tucked up like in a little ball. And just like, didn't know what, like, it was, it was so crazy, dude. Like when I realized what was happening, a part of me was so depressed that I wanted to die like immediately. Like I definitely had a part of me just being like, I can't believe this is happening, dude. Like I quit. I had this huge wave of just depression, like just fucking do it, dude, beat it, whatever. I'm out. Like, and they were just on both sides of me, like kicking my teeth out and I remember what my eyes were closed and they were dude just the booms of all their kicks and I think I was like I was convinced I was dead I was like the I'm done dude um I just remember the booms I don't remember feeling any pain and just boom 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 and all my teeth started rattling around in my mouth as my head was going and it sounded like an egg shaker. Like, and I, it started turning into like music, dude. It was so weird. And then I hear this, I, I went unconscious at that point. And for whatever reason, when they smashed the guitar on my head, it woke me up or it brought me out of unconsciousness. Really? And so I'll never forget, dude.
I like, I just remember opening my eyes and seeing like my guitar pieces flying like in slow-mo and this dude like just hold like all that was in his hand was the neck of the guitar and like the strings and just like, dude, it was so crazy looking. And I went right back to blackness and then who, woke up in the hospital. You? you woke up in the hospital. Yeah, but people actually, uh, so the people that I was with, dude, they like, they intervened. <clears throat> One of my buddies, um, you know, and I've only known these guys for like a week, two weeks or something, you know, mm -hmm. but they, uh, while they like, so I guess after, after the guitar, I was totally out. And then I guess they took a big boulder and that's my chin ended up getting totally split in half like it just totally cracked because wow. the, one of them took a big rock and just tried to spike it down on my face and like if they would have hit me here i'd totally be dead but they got me yeah. here and uh yeah. but then uh one guy like just jumped on my unconscious body and just started taking shots for me and then another guy oh. ran up and started like attacking. Like then people started seeing what was going on there and like people like okay. chased him off. But dude, just crazy, dude. Certainly sounds like it. Wow. Yeah. And they all got caught. And, and then I dropped the charges just dude. It was so crazy, man. And really dude, a lot. I mean, I hate the prison system and just seeing what is really going on in Maui is messed up dude what's happening to hawaii is super messed up sounds like, like it yeah mercy i almost don't even know <clears throat> where to go from there i i hope Man, on uh, some level that sharing the story is therapeutic for you you know it really is dude like thank you is for it? yeah this is totally like uh and another reason why I, or why i was um stoked to do this too it's very similar to the experience of crazy wise, but just sharing stuff in this type of weird, uncomfortable public way is it's cool, dude. It is a bizarre therapy, but that, yeah, just telling that, that felt really good, dude. And it was terrible to tell at the same time, but yeah, it's just some be. weird therapy, dude. Thanks. Thanks. And you know what? I yeah, can imagine for when we're doing, when we're doing me, this yeah. interview and we're doing the podcast, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who just shut the podcast off when you're telling that story because it's going to be too much for them. It's graphic, dude. But I'm, Man. I'm, I'm, uh, maybe I'll put a trigger warning in, but I'm yeah. leaving it in. You cool. Know, dude. Story stays intact. Okay. Cool. It's, yeah. I mean, people, I mean, for you to share something like that with us, um, maybe that's why you could do crazy wise. I mean, you're just a guy who can just share yourself publicly. For the greater good, you know? Maybe that's I, I your do gift. Like sharing, dude. It's funny how messed up I've been about it, too, since, um, or really since that event, man. I've had the worst PTSD about sharing. The fact, the way that they asked me to play music with them, and, like, it hit all these deep things in me that just, like, man, they've been very, very shut off. And yeah, like, like befriending you before yeah, I do this. Yeah. Right, man. That just like broke me, dude. Oh, it's mm -hmm. finally getting better. Really. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even, I mean, shit, dude, that was so long ago. It was like 10 years ago that that happened. Wow. Yeah. A long so time. we're close to long it, time. you know, something like that. Eight, mm -hmm. 10 years. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but I mean, I will, I still am messed up from it, dude. It's gotten mm -hmm. a whole lot better, but it still does really affect me and, and bug me. And so like, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, sharing, sharing music, things like that. That's been like, it sounds so silly, but that is like things I've been trying to do as like a form of therapy to like get over this shit and fix these weird little, uh, short circuits my brain's got was there a part of um living homeless or living in the tents that you preferred to being in an apartment um yeah yeah man like the 
just being in nature, like, well, so living in, in a tent in nature, not in a homeless encampment. <laughs> okay. Right. Like a tent in nature. Totally. Um, right. yeah, just being, you know, um, man near the river. I love being near water and just seeing nature, being able to be barefoot and have your feet in the sand. And like, it's just really calming to me. It, it just seems to just help me stay in a calmer state, you know, versus it, being it used to be uh, some sort of water skier or something competitive. Yeah. Skier. Uh, yeah. It's just like water skiing, but it's like a, it's, uh, wakeboarding. Yeah. It's kind of like snowboarding behind a boat. Wakeboarding. That's right. Yeah. Wakeboarding. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you you come to nature. It's like your, your home more than anything else. Huh? Yeah. I mean, even though wakeboarding is super removed from, I mean, you've got like sure. a loud boat dragging your ass around the lake. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. And I suck at surfing. So, <laughs> okay. but, um, yeah, no, I've always been, I've always loved animals and nature and just, um, yeah, just way less stimulation, man. Just even though there's a lot of noises in nature, for some reason they're peaceful or relaxing to me versus, you know, the sounds you mm -hmm. hear in the city. Okay. So you got, you were, you were saying before that you got a bit of inheritance from your dad and then there was an opportunity right. for you to live independently somehow and you decided to move into a tiny house. Is that right? Right. right. Yeah. 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 I've, um, I found this, I saw an ad on Craigslist for the, this land that I'm on right now. And it was mm -hmm. land for sale, bear, moose, cougar, turkeys, deer. It just listed off all the animals that you can see on the property. Mm. And I had no idea. I, I saw the photos of the view and of the land. It's just like really beautiful. There's wildflowers everywhere. Just an incredible view. And I had no idea where it was. I've never heard of where I currently live. And I just, um, even if man, it's in I, your own state, right? Yeah. You grew up in Washington, yeah, it's in Washington right? man. I've never heard of this place in my life. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I came out here and just looked like the one time I came out and saw it in person, I ended up making the purchase and or shaking the guy's hand and and being like, this is where I'm going to live. And it was like really impulsive, <laughs> you know, but just mm -hmm. it felt good and just like, wow, I can't believe I get to live in a place like this, you know. And uh, And then I found out where I moved to and it's really gnarly here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no idea what I'm doing and it's been nuts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's dang. not all peace and, and flowers and, and doing the poker with bears in the forest. No, no uh, dude. And, and that too, how funny being like, Oh yeah, I want to see all those animals. That sounds cool. And then you start seeing them and realize they're like, you know, in your yard and it's <laughs> scary, dude. <laughs> Yeah. It's scary, yeah, man. You know, nature is dangerous. That's why we build cities. Right. right. And big ass <laughs> fences, man. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But dang. Yeah. I've, I've, I've seen them. I've had some really cool animal sightings. Um, being out here, it's been really cool and, and terrifying, but also like really neat, dude. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the animals that has been a trip. And the, the weather here is super nuts. I've never experienced mm -hmm. really anything below like 20 degrees. And here it gets like negative 20. Like, and then the wind, like yeah. it gets super cold here. And then it'll get like 115, 120 in the summer. Or the, I the remember climate. last summer, last yeah. summer, the Okanagan Valley it Dude. went really high, right? Like it got really like 50 degrees kind of thing. It was brutal, dude. It was, there mm -hmm. was like a week of over 110 degrees and just mm -hmm. like dying. I don't, I didn't have AC set up or anything mm -hmm. and I was losing my mind, just not sleeping, just being too hot, just 
pouring water all over myself constantly. Like, wow. Just uh-huh. failing, dude. <laughs> or, you know, learn, <laughs> learning how to live, dude. It's just been wow. Like I and I really, I had no idea what I was even getting into. I was like, wow, this looks beautiful. Didn't didn't check the weather. Didn't check shit. Just was like, yeah, this is a good idea, dude. <laughs> yeah. When did you move in? Um. So I moved. It was uh, June of two. It was three years ago. This June. Two years ago. Yeah. So what is it? 2018? No. 2019. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so do you find yourself now a little bit more comfortable with the ins and outs of living in nature with the bears and everything? Yeah. Yeah. I've got, man, I was, I really was. So I was terrified. Now I'm, uh, yeah, it's cool. I get to see them. They don't want anything to do with me or nothing's like, there's been no incident. They just kind of do good. their thing and I get to see them sometimes. And it's really cool when I get to, but they're never like, and I do, I mind my garbage and stuff. That's been some just not so trying these, to. Th- these bears are a pressing concern. Like you cannot leave potato chips out on your porch. No, I wouldn't do be- anything. My, um, my neighbor's, I haven't I haven't seen the photo, but apparently they had a grizzly on their porch from leaving dog food out. Yeah, and so I'm I'm very yeah. I don't leave anything out there. I make sure everything is locked up or like even with my garbage, I I take like meat scraps or things that are like extra sweet, and I will throw those in my uh, compost pile that's like really far away. Right. But so nothing to be like, hey, come check out my place. See what else you find. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, yeah, I had a they, hummingbird feeder up and it actually attracted a bear. That was the only, uh, the only time a I hummingbird guess. Hummingbird feeder. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They that like was sweet my, stuff, right? They like, yeah, they like, and... they like the sweet stuff. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I came out one morning and my hummingbird feeder was all messed up in my compost. Uh, I had a compost much closer. That was my first year here. And I wasn't, mm-hmm. uh, I was actually making compost for the garden, um, specifically and still like, I have another compost for like the toilet and all the gross stuff, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, the bear dug up in my compost and swatted my hummingbird feeder. And I was <laughs> like, nope, like can't, I'm not even, <laughs> not yeah, even doing it takes that, a, man. It takes a while. You know, I, like I was saying, I moved out into the countryside, not as remote as you are. But, like, one of the gardeners who lives around here, he's put video up on Facebook of a panther, you know, going to his chicken coop, you know. So there's a panther in the neighborhood, you know. But it is a neighborhood. It's a guard-gated community and everything. But but moving here, it was like a baptism by fire. I mean, man, everything that you could have thought went wrong went wrong in the first three months. And the learning curve went up pretty quick, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm, uh, my uh, truck broke. Just crazy stuff. The, the way I get water right now is I have well access. It's about it's about a mile, a little over a mile away from my house. But wow. so, so you've got you got internet, but you don't have running water. I don't have running water. My wow. sink is a water cooler and a bucket. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I poop in a bucket too. <laughs> I couldn't handle that, man. I couldn't handle it, that. Dude, it's pretty <laughs> gross. It's I've finally gotten better at it, man. Like I started doing the compost toilet and I first I was using wood chips. That's what most people recommend. Okay. And uh-huh. it's really gross. It doesn't it doesn't uh help the smell or anything. I found I got some other tips along the way and now I'm using um uh, just ash from my wood stove. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of sawdust, like kind of a mix, but the ash makes it a whole lot less gross. <laughs> but it's still gross, dude. I mean, it's still yeah, a bucket full of like poop, it. dude. Like, no like it. <laughs> and I but, was curious, uh, aside from the grossness, um, how yet? How is how has the solitude been? Because you're kind of out there with your dog alone. Yeah. Blessing, curse, both. Man, uh, both. Both, um, 
Well, shit, dude, way more blessing than anything. Like mm-hmm. the only time, yeah, there's been some hard times where I'm just like two in my head, but really having my dog, he's, he's been so, such a cool little, um, what are they like a service animal for me? Like he okay. really does help me out. He's just this goofy basset hound. He, he's always like just really expressive and funny dude. And so like that, that has been, I mean, it helps a lot with moments of like loneliness, but really the, mm-hmm. the solitude is incredible, dude. Just, mm-hmm. it, it really is, man. I'm at times I wonder like if I like it too much, you know, where I'm like, am I, <laughs> am I messed up? <laughs> or, you know, I know I am still, but yeah. Like, am I being too isolated? Am I liking this too much? You know? Mm-hmm. But, but you were saying you're working twice a week, right? Like you go yeah. Wednesdays, Thursdays, something like that. You were working today. Yeah. So that's been cool. That just started, um, about two months ago. And right. before that though, yeah, it's been really difficult to find work and, um, yeah, but spending just a lot of time at my place and just way too, like not being able to afford to like really go anywhere anyway. So mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of times it, doesn't it has sound like been, there's anywhere. doesn't sound like there's anywhere to go to man there. Yeah. There is a, a town about an hour away. Excuse me, but yeah, it's, um, I mean, there's, there's some good restaurants and stuff and okay, that's people, good. there's actually a skate park there and like a oh. dog park and stuff, a river, all sorts of neat things. But are you still skateboarding? I haven't been, man. I, um, uh, paralyzed my foot. Uh, I spent a lot of time. I don't know if that actually made the film or not, but, um, I was playing a hand drum with a group of musicians in like a street band kind of deal. And we would play music a lot, um, Mm -hmm. just out in front of stores and make money together. And that was was, in the movie. Okay. So doing that though, I ended, I mean, we were doing it. We would play for like three hours at a time or, or sometimes longer. And I was being Mm -hmm. real dumb about how I was kneeling. I, uh, I was just take putting my knees on the concrete and Mm. just, and playing the drum and my foot would typically fall asleep when I would play for a long time, but then it would wake back up. And then one day it just fell asleep and didn't wake back up. Really? (laughs) Yeah. And they, they told me it's a drop foot is what I have. And like, it's recovered a lot. It was just totally paralyzed, but now it's just my, uh, my big toe, like barely, but it's enough that when I try to skateboard it, I can't balance properly for some reason. Okay. Got Just it, that got little it. bit of big toe, but I'm going to get it back and I'm going to skate again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we should probably wrap this up, but I'm just curious. Um, any plans, anything you're thinking about doing projects or. Uh, in addition to your tiny house, <laughs> man. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I'm currently, it's kind of like all under construction or so mm-hmm. I, uh, I've recently like six months ago, I started a YouTube channel that I was planning on doing like some type of like vlog about the off grid living and, and building because oh, my house okay. is really like it's like not even half done or I have a lot to still a lot to build and do. Okay. And I thought that would be a neat, um, just a neat way to share. And like, also I've been posting music, trying to like get over that. I really, all I've been sharing is like a, like more like instrumental music that I've been making, Mm -hmm. but just a fun way to, and a safe way to share music and, get over it. It's really for like, I don't know, I guess just a lot of things that I do is to try and like find therapy in it. But the YouTube channel is definitely, I'm trying to use that as like a cool therapy 
and then hopefully like share more stuff on it eventually. All right. Do you want but to give I'll, us the name of the YouTube channel? Did like, yeah. put it on the end of the video, the podcast? Um, yeah, the it's called Cabin Fever. Cabin and Fever. Yeah, I know if you like type that in on YouTube, I think just there's a bunch of films actually like called Cabin Fever. But if you type mm-hmm. in Cabin Fever Basset Hound, one of my <laughs> videos will pop up. I make a lot of goofy <laughs> videos of of my dog. That's another thing I've been having fun doing. Just sharing right, goofy man. videos of him. I'll, I'll find a link and I'll put it in the description or get it on the video somehow. Oh, I Cabin could, uh, Fever Basset Hound. Yeah, I'll, I can send you a link. I could email you a link to the channel if you were going to uh, post it or anything. That's cool. Sure. Yeah, I'll post something here on, on the Whatever. Cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. fun, man. The YouTube thing is oh, cool. It's a, a weird, cool little thing, dude. Like, yeah, you know, I started in 2007, and, you know, YouTube and I, we started a romance. Dude, <laughs> what a trip, man. Yeah, you've been yeah, on YouTube love... for so long now, man. I'm like You've the seen it do all sorts of changes, right? Like, it's a trip. Yeah. Man. Most of the changes to YouTube I don't like. It's gotten just so more and more commercial and really professional, and it's hard for me to compete. Right. Way, it's less, you know? it, yeah, like how it used to be, where it's just really organic and like, it's more like, this yeah. is my home movie. I hope you like it, dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I kind of I miss like that, that feel. Me too. Yeah, I miss the real. vibe. I, I don't like the, uh, you know, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. I don't like <laughs> yeah. that stuff. Yeah, dude. You know? It's your boy, Sean. Smash yeah. that like. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand that. Um, <laughs> Dang, dude. But but, but it's yeah, been it's a real blessing, yeah. Yeah, so cool, it's dude. Cool. I mean, I, I can't believe, man, how long your videos have been up and out, too. 15 years now. That's amazing, dude. And like the content that's on them, it's really crazy, dude. Like, yeah, so many great videos. I've been now just like diving back into your channel. It's really (laughs) cool, dude. There's so much content on there. And it's so weird watching me age, you know? Oh, I haven't, dude, what a trip. (laughs) Have you just do like a crazy quick time lapse? (laughs) Yeah, maybe I should do one of those one day. Because my first video was me in 2007. I was 42, but I looked like I was about 31, you know? Now I'm 56. I don't know how how old I look now that I'm 56, but yeah, it's been a a big, big shift. But anyways, thanks a lot. Uh, Don't forget to stay on the call here for a second. Oh, right. uh, Really appreciate it. And, you know... Getting to know you, even though you said in the crazy, you said about the Crazy Wise movie that it, it sort of creates a story and it's really not the whole picture of you and everything. But your rawness comes across talking to you, you know, like right on, you're, dude. You're, you're as real a guy as you're going to meet. I appreciate you know, that's that. That's the way dude. I see it. Yeah, and it comes through in the movie too. Comes through right on, movie. man. Yeah, and I think you have a pension for these crazy half wit this half sort of destructive experiences i think somehow you kind of attract these things man <laughs> dude dude you, i maybe some other time but i honestly i don't know man i had a weird experience of removing a curse and i don't know if i actually <laughs> was dude i'm not kidding you okay okay let's hear some it other let's time. hear it no i want to hear it now well hey i'll turn well, off the I recording mean, Okay, cool. Hang on. Okay, cool. so yeah, thanks again. Now uh, Adam and I are going to have a private conversation. Now the podcast's over. Sweet. Goodbye. All right. Later, dude.